so there are a lot of new people uh, joining the talk today so for them i will uh, give a brief description of what uh, blah 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 is uh, okay. so blah 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 is a uh, initiative of uh, canopy collective india uh, here it's a platform it's a hybrid platform uh, where we try to uh, people who are interested in community and uh, wildlife conservation and livelihood in the northeast uh, come together to discuss and share ideas uh, it could be either their work it could be papers that they are interested in books they are interested in uh, pretty much anything uh, and uh, for the new people here i also want to tell that if you guys want to uh, present any of your ideas or any uh, books that you came across or papers uh, you are free to uh, just email me um, so the as i said this is a hybrid platform so on top of the online uh, talks uh, we are also getting together and uh, like this uh, talk is happening uh, like offline in Facebook uh, at the green hub office uh so today's workshop is going to be uh, conducted by tejaswini uh tejaswini works uh right now she mostly works uh but for designing mitigation measures uh to uh, mitigate elephant train collisions uh with wwf uh and she is uh, passed out from the uh, National Institute of Design from Ahmedabad. Uh, apart from working on conservation uh, of elephants, uh, she also, in her free time, she does a lot of DIY, really cool DIY stuff, like uh, hydroponics, making her own camera traps, 3D printing, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, we can start. Thanks, Rohit. Um, yeah, so one second. Yeah, so um, like Rohit said, thanks for the introduction. Uh, like we said, I'm a designer uh, by training and I work in conservation. So uh, I'm trained to look at things visually, to uh, convey my concepts visually, which is why while uh, listening to any sort of a talk or a workshop or any uh, event like conferences, I have this um, process of taking notes in a combination of words and visuals. And um, so, and I find it very uh, useful to note take that way because one is it helps me process the information and also when I go back to it, it helps me quickly go through this, that information. So uh, we were thinking that we uh, I could explain my process of this kind of note taking, uh, but just talking about it, I think will be a little uh, boring. So we thought we'll make it a interactive session where everyone can also try their hand at visual note taking. Yes. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Sorry. yeah, sorry, I'll I think speak a little try and speak a little louder. There's more people here with who couldn't hear me. Uh, so what are sketch notes? Sketch notes kya hai? So sketch notes, jo bhi talk hai, concept hai, jo bhi hai, uska ek, jab bhi hum notes likhta hai na, uska concise, jo bhi suna tha, jo bhi whatever you understood, uska ek brief notes hai. Kaise dikhta hai sketch notes? This is one example. If this is not visible, I can uh, make up, show you a big one. So, uh, this is a regarding it's not yeah 
so this is an example of a sketch note that somebody else did while i was describing my work of elephant train collisions and uh, what am i doing so is mein hai you can see what all i'm looking at some they've sketched out what the problem is uh, how i was explaining fog low visibility are issues for elephant train collisions uh, insights who all have are giving insights what who are my stakeholders so isko dekhne mein pura jo bhi main bataya uska snapshot milega ye to it was a half an hour ka talk and this is a concise one pager of all the key points that was discussed during that uh there there more examples so you can make sketch notes on different things this was me listening on uh a talk by kaushik barwa on uh, and uh, on uh, welfare of elephants yeah so it was about what can be alternatives this was also wildlife sos interventions that were done on welfare of captive elephants uh, where they spoke about what are uh, the problems that these captive elephants face like loneliness um, how do they express this like head bobbing swaying uh, what could be positive reinforcements done for example when you're treating them for blood draws kya kya kar sakte hai it's not a bahut detail mein explain nahi karta hai par ek brief overview deta hai if you have listened to the talk and you go through this it gives fir se remind karta hai ki kya kya baat hua tha us time another example is something completely away from what we are familiar with it which was this is done by someone else uh it's just about how how do you think how what are the things that make people anxious uh what are negative thoughts that people get so sketch notes jo bhi topic hai uske bare mein kar sakte hai aur alag alag levels mein kar sakte hai bahut rough bhi ho sakta hai bahut refined ye kafi refined hai बहुत रफ भी हो सकता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज फ्लैट अर्थ वर्सेस राउंड अर्थ हाउ कैन यू शो द डिफरेंस अगर फ्लैट अर्थ होता तो या इनिशियल कॉन्सेप्ट जो था इस तरह होता तो यूएस से चाइना डिरेक्ट ड्रिल किया तो यूएस से चाइना जाना था बट एक्चुअली वेन यू थिंक ऑफ अ ग्लोब इट गोज टू द इंडियन सी सो थिंग्स लाइक दैट शेविंग द मिथ अबाउट शेविंग इट वोट मेक द हेयर ग्रो फास्टर so these kind of things the small concepts a pura 2 minute ka explanation ek small visual mein dikha sakta hai ye kafi rough bhi ho sakta hai this was main uh, ek friend ka ek meeting tha so i was attending the meeting where she was discussing ki um, how is the firewood dependence of uh, people in tea gardens what is their requirements what do they get as firewood from the tea garden management and also regarding what is their payments uh, what are they owed how is their uh, how how does this firewood gets distributed so you can see uh, peel is a if you can see peel is a unit of measurement of firewood o oh, 5 feet 5 feet or 5 feet ye ex words mein explain karna tha to kafi sara explanation chahiye tha but then just making a simple illustration which shows wood and marks the edges of that box gives you an idea of this is what how much one peel is and even uh, how management distributes uh, to different people the closest to the management get 2.5 peel a little further down the hierarchy get one peel the lowest rung gets half a peel so it it shows how distribution is if i had to write this the management segregates uh, firewood quantities based on different types of people uh, each of these categories get different uh, amounts of firewood ye sab likhne mein time lagta hai so when this kind of a discussion is happening these quick very rough quick sketches make it helpful to make a note of this and understand it and it also helps jo bhi likh raha hai na it helps process that information ki kya bata raha hai ऐसे नहीं है कि पूरा जो भी बात कर रहा है ऐसे ही वर्ड्स लिख रहा है वो समझ के कन्वर्ट करना पड़ेगा विजुअल फॉर्म 
सो वाई वाई डू वी हैव टू स्केच सो एग्जैक्टली जो भी बात कर रहे हैं आगे अगर इस वर्कशॉप का बारे में आप पूरा नोट्स करना है एवरी वर्ड आई सेट इज नॉट यूजफुल सो हैविंग एवरी वन हैज सर्टन थिंग्स दैट दे थिंक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट and that is what you recognize and make a note of so making a combination of words and wishes helps you capture that and understand what you need and just record that as your uh, notes so and i've heard this a lot that i can't sketch and i'm bad at sketching uh, it needs to be practical sketch notes jo hai aap alag Look examples they got. Some are very pretty, some are very functional. So sketch notes doesn't need to be like pretty. It just needs to convey what is the message being said. And when you look at it, you need to understand what you wrote. It should be neat enough for you to understand what you wrote. You can have your quotes. Agar uh, I want to denote something like a person. If you can see in this, every time there's a person, I have a way of showing that person. so i don't think again and again what that is so when i see i know that is a person you can have small cues like that which help you you it's your own code of making these notes quick and fast and it needs to be fun it shouldn't be something ki it's an effort to do when you're making notes try to start including small visuals which might save time or which might make it easier for you to uh, record it and then i think eventually it helps build that practice and how do we make this easy jo bhi hai jo bhi concepts hai you can talk about anything you can use small shapes like simple shapes and 2d drawings to make these uh, this ones we make these um, drawings we can actually try that out now um i think everyone has their pen and paper right so how how let's start trying this out all of us um let's start with a house how do you draw a house as simple as it can be no details nothing yes actually people online can maybe if you have patience to uh, can people share their images i'll be too much to ask i think or we can go through all of these four and all of us can hold up our uh, sketches it'll be nice to see how simple try not to make it complex at all no details but it should look like a house house tree day and night does anyone want to say anything any questions yeah question yeah showing to the camera is great actually it'd be nice to see ah that's great wow <laughs> this is so nice yeah so guys here <laughs> so cool so when you think of it a house can just be as simple as a triangle 
and a square. A tree can be just a squiggle line two times. Day can be as simple as a sun or with uh, hills like I saw. Night can be moon, maybe moon with a star. So depending on your time, you can also add details as much as you want. Now let's let's go on to a few more examples. These were things that we do, but now we can go on to concepts like time, electricity, temperature, which don't have exact visual cues, but you can uh, try drawing it. Time, I sometimes draw it like a hour glass or a clock. Electricity can be different things. Or a battery. Temperature can be Or it can even be an energy of heat. What would you do for a document or a report? Because that is something that is generally spoken about. Factory. Farm. I don't know what a farm can be like. Is everyone done? Can we see another round again? Ah, that's cool. Oh, ohm is a nice one. The resistance. Ah, that's a cool factory. That's an interesting farm, Anisha. Sancha has an elaborate farm. <laughs> oh, Nandini's electricity is nice, the poles. Nice. Shall we move to the next one? Now, a little more, few more prompts which are a little more uh, connected to our context, what we generally hear about, uh, which are more, a little more abstract than things and concepts you're familiar with. So a lot of times communities, I just put people and write community. Location, I use the go to Google point kind of a thing. Logging can be fun, like 
all the logging is in front. Or a Distribute can be a little more abstract where you make maybe More like a concept which you're explaining, saying things get distributed, something gets distributed. Balance, I think, is easy. It can be an actual balance. Idea can be cliche stuff like maybe a bulb or someone thinking. So everyone had their chance at this. I can't see your stewards. Oh, yes. The idea is to uh, thought bubble for an idea. That's also a nice one. Logs for logging, location. Yeah, and also it's like Sanchez has used words. You can also use certain words to also add to your explanation. The distribution is quite nice, Sanchez. Hmm. Oh, wow, Anuja is on a roll. So pretty. Great. Anyone else? Ooh, Nandini's logging is very gripped. <laughs> Nice. Shall we uh, now try a little more uh, cons? Like, while these were simple icons that we were uh, doing based on word prompts, we can now maybe listen to some short clips and uh, see how you can make a sense of that. So, I picked a few sections of the previous blah, blah, blah talks. And we can listen to that and then maybe draw from that. Yeah, I'll unmute this. Which cannot find any of the government, not a circuit of majority, where it is existing power. So, um, in this model, uh, the there is a conversation or a public concern that can be depended on its own ground in the face of all other challenges. The very model argues that this can be depended on its own ground in the face of all other species also being felt. 
right? Um, and uh, the Zenith model also works on saying that you know, we can't create large scale changes in terms of the product that you offer later, or um, we can't create large scale changes in terms of um, like the junction, which is the fourth model that I will come to. But we can work on time tension for the um, windows, right? So coming to finally, I'll just start off with the last model. Yeah, so this was, uh, I can play it again, but this was a small section of Nandini explaining the Zelect model. So one thing we can initially start off is maybe writing in the chat how, what was being explained and maybe five words or one sentence. As simple as possible, if you can explain that in the chat, it will be nice to see what was understood of that section. Yeah, shall I play this again? Is what for is called the Zenith model or the model of conservation of the change cannot rest primarily on the government, nor on a circuit of metabolism, where it is existing power. So um, maybe you can just consider this section and type in the chat what what you understood by this this particular sentence that Nandini is saying. The Excel did not make any um it's a very that Elena Austin's work on writing the comment this is is what for it's called the Z one or the model of conservation of the change cannot rest primarily on the government nor on a circuit of metabolism. Where there is existing power. Yeah, so just the uh, initial bit of what Nandini was saying. Yeah, we know a lot, but how to do? What else can it be? It is. It is about where power. How is power balanced? Uh, anything else? that you perceive from the sentence. Hmm. But that was, again, so that was not really said. It's talking about how power is... Yeah, yeah. Mm. So now maybe you can use some of the icons that we were already drawing and try to see if you can just use that to show what this sentence meant. Do you want to hear that again? Is what for is called the Zenith model or the model of conservation of the change cannot rest primarily on the government nor on a circuit of metabolism where there is existing power. Um, Anyone else other than Nandini who can tell what uh, they understood from the select model? Just that sentence. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to draw it out, that's also cool. You can share again like the previous one. No? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so how would you maybe show it in a illustration? So maybe I know it's a very abstract thing, but Yeah. 
to be safe. Hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I will put it in this kind of a bar. No more chats. Yeah, change cannot only happen to government or a major section of society. That's a great point. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe we can start off with maybe slightly simpler concept that Nandini was talking about from uh, regarding distribution of leadership. Um, and this is also um, something that I keep in terms of something that we can find the way that something that might be here because this is what it's is in the 70s and in the 60s, when a lot of institutions were uh, born, uh, one could argue that there was a need for, uh, and also when the industrial uh, revolution was in place, one could argue that there was a need for, um, for instance, uh, an age dying coalition of community leaders who had lots of institutional power, or were given institutional power by the political. Forces of that time uh, to force change to a system of force change to an organization. Um, and today, we see a lot of those feminists in the institutions uh, that are part of um, or are associated with sometimes founder effects or senior scientists in NGOs um, and research institutions in a certain way. Um, we also see that there are lots of top down institutional structures where there are leaders and followers rather than peers uh, that are working on one, one basis. And um, George Oduro and many other ideas of creation to talk about the need to move away in the second time of the year, to move away from post the oil industry in our leadership to a more restrictive uh, level of leadership. Yeah. yeah, that is on similar lines, but I think that's a more uh, easier to visualize statement where you're moving from a hierarchical leadership to a distributed leadership. I think that will be a good one to try. Does anyone want to share their uh, understanding of these two videos? I've also shared the links if you want to listen to it again. Plans. Oh yeah, leader to distribute it. That's amazing. Was that okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's it's just an exercise to understand how do you listen to information and uh who Sanchez as well elaborate. Hmm. Yeah, where this is a little more detail where she's described about the goals and how distributed leadership still feeds into the goal. That's a nice one. Yeah. 
So it's it's mostly an exercise on how you start listening to things and like recognizing what the message is and trying to put that into a combination of words and uh, sketches. We can maybe try one more, uh, which is this image Srinivasan stop where I can also share this in the chat. This requires close caption. Is, is it understandable? No. Okay. Sorry, this audio is not. We can try this one, which is more fun to draw it. So the way history uses these uh, elements of play, creativity, and scenario building to help children learn about what they can do when they are in these situations of having one of their friends been bitten by a snake, or when they see somebody who is in danger, or somebody who is potentially in position to cause danger to the snake itself, because this relationship is. It goes to years. Um, the scenario class themselves have come from including questions in the workshops that I've conducted. I'll talk about this a little bit more in my research. And this content has been designed in collaboration with Shraka Rato, and she will in this and how maybe we can get to the person to me as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, so here she's describing about what these, uh, this game that. The, Adira is describing her game which is developed regarding snake bite mitigation. So she's one talking about uh, what the game is intended for, what is it informing things. Uh, so you can try maybe making one or two, picking one or two sentences of this and may, maybe do a combination of writing and illustrating because this I think will be easier to visualize. You're looking at Snake bite mitigation. There's also some cute visual cues that you can derive from. He uses these uh, elements of play, engagement, and scenario building. So, I if I were to illustrate this, then I would maybe look at how do you show a game, uh, and it's targeted towards children, and what the topic is. So it's about snake bite mitigation. To or help children with encounters with snakes about what they can do when they are in a situation of having one of their friends been bitten by a snake, or when they see somebody who is in danger, or somebody who is potentially in position to cause danger to the snake itself. So, if this relationship is, it goes to years. Um, the scenario part themselves have come from interview questions and workshops. That and then you can also describe how she got this uh, information, how she got decided to do what. She's describing how she's done her research. So there's enough, I think, to take a chance and illustrate this. I'll talk about this a little bit more in my research. And this content has been designed in collaboration with Shraka. Yeah. And her collaborators. So, yeah. Anyone wants to listen to it? Is it too much? We'll give a minute to try this. Was talking about some sort of a game which she also has some in the cell. Different 
and it talks about how to involve children. I think maybe I would show children as. You can see these are also very crude because I'm doing it quick and on uh, right now. And the topic is about snake bites. So that's nice. One is about bites. Maybe we can show some sort of a common bite spot. Or when you spot a snake somewhere. Yeah. She's also talking about what to do. Maybe keep. Keep this tense or other things. She might have a list of things of what needs to be done when such encounters happen. Anyone's got a chance to draw this out? Manisha has something. Shraddha is me. Uh, Manisha has nicely made it very concise. Shraddha is more descriptive. Mutas is also interesting. Mm, Sanjaya says expressions which are cute. Yeah, I guess uh, anyone else has more to share. I will, in the meantime, maybe show a list, some of the images of what I'd done for my Okay. okay. Where this was the technique of someone sharing. Yeah, this was about so it's um like you can see my notes are not necessarily only visuals it's a decent mm -hmm. bit of uh text as well like for what is workshops what are training manuals like a lot of times you can't draw everything just as long as it's an efficient process it's a good practice this is about different things that the collective is involved in the different types of mapping uh, like Zelic model I didn't have much to draw unlike you guys so it's been as is during the talk well, like or like the decentralized thing there was this is the other talk which we couldn't think here about. But 
which wasn't clear, but why is it not okay? Yeah. So I think if yeah, if you guys were there for this talk, it was regarding how temperatures are affecting a birds, which was I think also the presentation had enough visual cues in terms of images to help uh, make this, which made it easier for me to also visualize. But you can see how gradients can be uh, shown or what happens if uh, there's one section which which was in the shared clip where if, if they are uh, spotting a bird, what is the process of recording minimum maximum temperature that they have temperature loggers on different altitudes. And based based on where they spot it, they record the minimum and maximum temperature between those points. Then it's about what are thermal specialists, what are thermal generalists. I think this these graphs were more were more derived from what was said. Then how climate change and habitat loss are affecting thermal specialists. Selective logging is also one of the things that I that is described. How indirectly also these um, temperature changes are affecting birds. Yeah, just an example of the previous work. Anyone wants to share what they were working on? Can you guys here try something? Yeah. I just feel you think Ishita's drawing on the snake like one. You know? I'll show the others. That was the select distributed color. Thank you. Through it. <laughs> uh, this is the, the very concise one, which is cool. It's about the game, which is fine. Like, you. sorry, pin myself. Yeah, yeah so this one was. He do as much as possible, and then I don't know if it's focusing. So, more, yeah. Do as much as possible, and then root it down, which is actually a good way to go about it because there shouldn't be a barrier to doing this if you can't think in visuals. Yeah, but that's a brief introduction to sketch noting. I hope. This was a useful one. Does anyone have any questions or do they want to try, think that they want to try this more? Ooh. Wow. So this is so interesting. Hey, which which one is that from? Uh, Arjun's workshop. Sorry, Arjun's talk. Uh, no, this is just. Hi, this is just uh, when I was trying to document uh, the captive elephants in Pake. I just wanted to put down ideas and questions. So. Uh, yeah, I just made one with some sketch, also added a photo. And mm. uh, yeah, there's a lot of text also. And I tried to like show a captive elephant with the feet and the chain. I don't know if you can see it. Mm. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, but then yeah, there's also a lot of text. So. Yeah, I think that's... But yeah, I took forever to do this. <laughs> 
like you can't draw everything out but it's nice to have that switch between the two i think yeah Thanks for sharing, Shraddha. Anyone else who's done well this? Done. Be nice to see your process also. Yeah, but oh, thanks, Vincent. I hope you do. But yeah, I think that's it for the workshop. <laughs> thanks for being patient for so long and participating. It was nice to see how the same things everyone do in different ways. Uh, I think all of us can draw inspiration from each other's uh, ways of visualizing things. That was very cool. Thank you, Tejaswini. It was amazing. Thank you. Does anyone have anything? Thanks, Tejaswini. But Tejaswini, like if you had to do it during a talk, like if somebody's talking and you're, uh, you know, you're visually putting it down in the book, it's also something that would take a lot of practice, right? Because you're going to miss out so much um yeah i think it's a slow process like you would generally take down notes right when someone's speaking about something i think just starting to include certain visual things maybe i don't think it should be a complete switch but um, i think just starting to include a few things in your process eventually will make it uh, easier to do I because like I think when I do it in my head there's certain things which I always I don't think before drawing like people questions alerts there's certain words which I I don't think before sketching I think the more you practice that becomes faster right also what I do sometimes is just write down small notes and then leave space for my creativity to kick in later so I can like uh, draw something for that. Yeah. Oh, who are my favorite sketch noters? There's actually this, uh, I can share, uh, there are lots of people, uh, but there's this community which is uh, a very cool one called the sketch effect, which uh, like people keep uploading the sketches, what they're uh, writing about, what they've listened. A lot of time people do this for podcasts and that's uh, supposed to be a good practice to try actually to when you're listening to podcasts to make these sketch notes. So because you can then go forward, backward and uh, build that practice. So you can check out these when where you can see a lot of people doing this. Yeah. Shall we end the talk? Great. This is a nice one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.